Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Good evening. Heyo. Heyo. <laughs> That's a new, you're trying something new there, huh? Just trying it out. <laughs> That's pretty nice. It actually makes me think of a lot of car commercials I've seen growing up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Like they do the feeling hot, hot, hot for car Toyota. Come down to your Toyota car dealership. Feeling hot, hot, hot. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and Heyo reminds me of that for some reason I cannot identify. Wow. Does it have anything to do with our movie tonight? Uh, Feeling hot, hot, hot. Maybe. Oh. Oh. Do you know what we're watching tonight? I have no idea. No? No. It must be a summer movie. It's hot. <laughs> well, let's just say there's port. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say Joe versus the volcano. <laughs> no. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, that's uh, that, that, that's a good. We should add that one to the list. Is it Say Anything with John Cusack? Have you seen that? No, but a friend said that you should put that on the list today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just now remembering. Okay. Say anything. All right. Uh, no, it is not that either. Okay. It, uh, let me see. The reason I mentioned the hot, hot, hot is there are portions of this movie that will be quite hot because of the activity that's happening. And I realized that's a really bad clue. <laughs> <laughs> As I said it. I have, I have no idea. I can give, I can give you a better clue. Please do. You dreamed of watching this as a young, as a young girl. In the 80s. Young Guns 2? You dreamt of watching Young Guns 2 in the 80s? Yeah, remember when we did that? I was like thinking it was Young Guns 2, the, like, the um, whole preamble. Um, okay. A movie I dreamed of watching when I was a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know the clue? Yeah. I We've already watched so many of the ones I dreamed um, of watching. I, I can't remember if it was... A podcast one or two times ago where you literally named this movie and said you wanted to see that movie growing up. Oh, yeah. I never remember stuff like that. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. Okay. Are you crazy? Are there any kind of like <laughs> summer activities you ever wanted to do as a kid that you maybe dreamed of going to a place? Surfing? Different, different kind of camps you go to? Uh, band camp. You went to band camp. I went to band camp. This Girl was, Scout camp. This is the Penn Ultimate Camp in the 80s. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're watching Space Camp. We are watching Space <gasps> Camp. I really, you're right. I did want to watch that. I, oh. You are covering your mouth in joy right now. Oh my goodness. The look in your face when you realize what it was. I'm so excited. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. No more talk. Let's go watch. No, no, no. What do you know about this movie? I know. Well, isn't it about like kids who are training to be astronauts or something? Oh, and maybe. they have to go through like all this like training or whatever. I don't I mean, that's the name, all I remember. Based on the name of the movie, Space Camp, that sounds fairly reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I have no idea who's in it. No. No. Okay. I just remember, I think, remember thinking like, oh, this is something I would love to do. So I want to see this movie. Mm, okay. Well, if you give me a tagline for the movie, like on the poster, on Melissa's poster of this movie. Space, kids in charge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go see. If let's kids, see let's it. Let's go see ah, it. Ah, yes. Atlanta, do you copy? This is Atlantis. Radio check satisfactory. Over. <laughs> Space Camp. Rubber ticket, purple ticket. America's real training ground for future astronauts. I'm going to be the first female shuttle commander. Catherine, you're not a passenger, you're a pilot. Buy it. Do you want Space Camp? My father wants Space Camp, but I want uh, my head examined. Please return your seats and tray tables to their full upright position. Remember everything I read. It's a real drag sometimes. What did you get on your SATs? 800s. And what is your name? Rudy Tyler, ma'am. Spit it out, Rudy. Rudy Tyler, ma'am! The green one right next to the red. At 0900 Thursday, we're going to test fire the engines, and some of you will be able to sit in this. Earth to Catherine. Stand by for main engine test. She's all yours. Four, 
Three, two, go for main engine test. test. We have main engine test. We have overheat on booster B. What does that mean? We can't stop it. Booster B is near ignition. It's going to light. Get that thing operational. Go for launch. Now! We're not authorized. Light it or they're going to die. What's happening? Do it now. An impossible mistake launch them into space. The adventure of their lives will be getting back home. Space Camp. So? That was Space Camp! You were pretty stoked to see this. I am a space nerd. I love anything in space. And... Kids going to space, it can't get better. You do love children. That's true. I do. Yeah. If I had watched this as a kid when I wanted to, yeah. I yeah. probably would work for NASA now. Like <laughs> I wanted to work for NASA after watching this. It was it did for NASA what Top Gun did for like the Air Force. The Air, well, it wasn't the Air Force. They were anyway, to the okay. military. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were on aircraft carriers. I don't want to get sidetracked though. It did for NASA. Yes, like love letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I totally would have loved this as a kid. As an adult watching it, you're like, okay, this is for kids. Do oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, one of those kinds of movies. But a lot, the kid in me is there. Like, so yeah. I enjoyed it. I think the facet too of like, as an adult watching this, who was a kid in the 80s, mm -hmm. it was, it's just a fun time capsule. Mm -hmm. Just the... I mean, the, all the things I normally gush about with time capsules, the language, the clothes, the, the clothes. music. Oh, my goodness, the clothes. <laughs> and yeah, just um, this was too like the Cold War was still going on. You know, there was a lot of uh, involvement and in, in energy around the space program, which kind of like we're back. I feel like we're getting not to the Cold War, maybe, but we're kind of getting back to like NASA energy again. Yeah. I feel like nowadays. Yeah. Bring it on. There was like a big lag though there for like a decade or two. I know. I know. I want three. the NASA energy to come back. I know. I know. So it was really, I really enjoyed that facet of this movie too. Uh, before we get too far in though, do you want to give us a quick summary? Okay. Yes. Space camp is just what it sounds like. Um, kids go to a summer camp um, and they kind of get trained on all the training to be an astronaut. It's not just any summer camp. It's it is hosted by NASA, right? Yes, like, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. So the teachers running it are all like NASA people. I just can can imagine that happening today, where like all of NASA decides, okay, for three weeks in the summer, you're all going to be camp counselors <laughs> and like teach yeah. teenagers. That was pretty awesome. Um, well, they still do space camp. Like that's still a thing. But I don't think it's probably accurate that they're like, all right, you're the person who's going up on the next shuttle, but you got to do space camp this summer. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, though. We Maybe saw... Star Mohawk guy is actually yeah. also teaches at camp. It could be uh, Bobek, right? Yeah. And we saw the the guy who was the astronaut who was lined up to be, you know, on the Mars mission eventually. Mm -hmm. We saw him, I don't know, seven years ago at a Comic-Con or something. So yeah. maybe they still go and do it. Anywho. I know what our kids are doing next summer. <laughs> so anyway, the, um, there's a space camp. The kids go and they're put into a group. And so you have this like little group of um, teenagers. The woman who is teaching them, um, she just got the news that she's not going up. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to. She yeah. wanted to be on the next um, shuttle to space and she didn't get it. And she just got that news. So now she has to teach the kids. She's a bit... I mean, she's totally devastated by that news and she's kind of yeah her head's maybe not totally in it yet agree in the beginning absolutely yeah her husband tom scarrett mm -hmm. is that his name look at you whoa wow i feel like i'm saying a name from battlestar galactica it, when i say tom scarrett it does kind of feel like that yeah wasn't there anyway sidetracking anyway, yes there was a tom somewhere in battlestar galactica true so anyway um they <laughs> There's a summary in here somewhere. Somewhere. She, they're, um, they're learning all the ropes and stuff. And in this, there's this like robot 
um, that the youngest kid in the group, who wasn't really supposed to be in their group, but he was like, come on, I, I did the little kid group for the past three summers. Let me join the big kid group. And mm-hmm. they're like, fine. Who happens to be Joaquin Phoenix. Credited as, as Leaf. Leaf Phoenix. Yes. <laughs> this is his first movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, he was amazing. Yeah, he was good. Um, So he's in the group. There's a couple other kids in the group. And um, he befriends this robot droid named Jinx. Yes. And Max and Jinx are friends. And <laughs> sorry, resisting the urge to do my Jinx voice, but I keep going. By all means. Max and Jinx friends. <laughs> <laughs> you did that voice for me so many times uh, before I knew where it came I from. I sure did. That Such was a cute robot, yeah, too. He's a cute robot. Mm-hmm. I like him a lot. So anyway, Jinx ends up sending them to space. They actually get launched Man. in a shuttle yeah. with their teacher, thank goodness. Um, and they're in space and they have to figure out how to get back. And that's that's the movie. That's the movie. Yeah, it was great. Um, while we're talking about Jinx, because I love Jinx, uh, was there any other... What would you think about Jinx? He was different as far as robot types go because his mm-hmm. body is super, is a big ball. Yeah. <laughs> and his head is this little telescoping thing with eyes that can that can come up out of the body yeah. or like retreat down back in mm-hmm. kind of like a turtle, but yeah. nothing like a turtle. Yeah. And then he has these like three tripod like wheelie legs yeah. and arms. Yeah. And he's got these like spoke arms that kind of come out. They're like yeah. skinny. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he can like totally kind of just go and be a ball yeah and then he can kind of expand with his like moving parts yeah i love when he talked to the nasa computer in order to like get it so they would launch and his like the special effect for it was there was no such thing as like wireless connections back then yeah but his specialized thing was it there was just some glowing light that swirled (laughs) in his neck and that's how uh, that was part of it i think but Little did they know, Bluetooth was coming. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure one of his little arm adapter things that came out had like a VGA, those blue connectors you used to use on CRT monitors. You use them nowadays too, but but sorry. Yes, they're the blue ones. They have a certain amount of pins. They're called VGA adapters. I'm pretty sure it was VGA adapter that he like plugged in there. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Yeah. I I also thought with Jinx too, another movie we would have seen on the podcast was uh, Clash of the Titans. Yeah. And there was the owl whose name was... Bubo? Bubo? Bebo? Bebo. It was Bebo. Uh, Bebo? Mm-hmm. I always think of Bilbo. That's why I always get messed up with it. <clears throat> totally looks like they just took his head mm. and just put it under the orb thing to me. Like, whenever <laughs> I watch this, I always think of that. Yeah, the eyes are very much like mm-hmm. Bebo, the yeah. owl eyes. Yeah. I like Jinx, though. He's I love a, Jinx. It, with, he, the movie wouldn't be anything without him. Like, it's, I mean, no, the movie's great, but <clears throat> he he's, like, central to the movie. I wonder, he is a central processing unit. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if they named him Jinx because he kind of gets into high Jinx in the movie. Hmm. I, I don't know the answer. It's Bad just, luck, perhaps? Could be. Oh, he, yeah. He did kind of, he was the orchestrator of what seemed to be bad luck. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Good point. So, wow, so much. Who is your favorite character besides Jinx? Hmm, I don't know her name, but the lead girl, not the mm-hmm. not the woman. Annie? Is it Annie you said? Oh no, Catherine. Catherine. Catherine? Okay. Yeah, it was Leah Thompson, right? Yes, yeah. Leah Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, she was <clears throat> she was great, but also her friend Tish. who was kind of Tish. Yeah. <laughs> what a great name. Yeah, Kelly Preston. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was kind of like supposed to be the ditzy. Like, oh, you know, really into yes. 80s fashion and, and gum. But like behind all that was like the super sharp. She was a genius. Brain. Yeah. She had yeah. like an 800 on her SATs or something crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I liked her, but I really liked the lead girl, um, her drive. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't I'm not happy with what they did with her story. Oh, no, no. And Do I tell. don't say that a lot. I, I know. I know. But it, it, they her whole story arc was that she wanted to be a leader and not mm-hmm. just the pilot. Mm-hmm. And um, the woman, the teacher, the the woman in charge, the yeah. NASA woman was like pushing her so she would like really reach for her goals and like mm-hmm. push herself yeah. really hard on her. And then but when they were in at the end, when they're in space, when they're and she has yeah. the chance mm-hmm. to like yeah. do this stuff. She like falters, but she doesn't regain her footing. And in the end, it's like the guy huh. takes over 
Uh-huh. And he and she goes to be a pilot, a good pilot, and she does it. Uh-huh. And she overcomes that one stabilizing thing, uh-huh. but she doesn't like reach her goal. In a in a <clears throat> and the the boy has to take over for her. I I wish they would have gone a step further uh-huh. and really made her like overcome and and rise up. On I top. mean, I feel like I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I okay. see where you're coming from, though, but. I feel like with her character, they totally seeded that she was like too much to the max, almost pushing herself to do everything, which a leader can't do everything. And they need to learn that. They need to learn to trust other people and allow them to do their thing. Otherwise, you cannot be an effective leader at all. So like, I feel like she was doing that in that scene where she tries to like own everything and she tries to do someone else's job and then Mm -hmm. she ends up making the wrong call in it, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like a super important lesson in life. Like- and then also the other character, the guy who took over, he just thought he was worthless and that he would never amount to anything and couldn't do anything. So having him like have confidence to do that, I don't know. It felt like a nice balance thing. She learned something she needed to do. He learned something he needed to do. Everybody learned something. So <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm... I feel like she'll get there, though. If they did a Space Camp 2, I think she would get there. Yeah. Uh, I think she could have got there okay. in this one. I think there it could have been like there's a, a lesson that she learned at that moment when they were um, mm-hmm. the gas, the oxygen canister. Yeah. They had to rewire something mm-hmm. and she made the wrong call. Mm-hmm. But I feel like after that, that could have been her moment to like mm. rise up. And- I don't even remember what the next disaster was. I'm trying to remember what it was that she would have done that for. I thought that was it, and then they were back. But um, no, then they were like, "We got to get to the rendezvous." They had they found another window to land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was kind of just at the controls and just like freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the boy was like, he just kind of oh, because the yeah, took it someone over. was injured, and they had to decide if they land or not. That was yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that would be my only like mm. critique. I think they could have given the girl more power. I feel like we just set like a precedence here in the podcast. Wow. (laughs) I will say I agree, but for 1986, there was a lot of girl empowerment for a 1986 film based on some of the movies I've seen in the eighties. Okay. Just saying Hmm. it could always go further, but to keep it in context of when it was made too. So I liked her a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, although I wanted more for her at the end. So, um, what about you? What was your favorite character? My favorite character I don't know. I, I really liked Rudy. He was just kind of the guy in the background. He had a dream of having the first fast food restaurant in space. <laughs> he had very small parts and stuff, but yeah. I don't know. I liked the way he was played. He was fun. I also liked uh, Leaf. Uh, I'm sorry, Joaquin Max. Like mm-hmm. he, he was just a fun character too. But those two characters are my favorite. Like the gag they use with Rudy just makes me laugh. And it's just a ridiculous gag. It's when he's sitting there during training and she says, spit it out because he's chewing gum. And he just shouts his name because he thought she meant, <laughs> you know, say, he was mumbling. Or like something. say it louder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So those are my faves. So did you recognize the actors in this movie? Um, no, you had to tell me that Max was Joaquin Phoenix mm-hmm. and watching him was yeah. amazing. That was so crazy. That mm-hmm. was so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also had to tell me who Leah Thompson was. Yeah. I had no idea. I was like, yeah. she's familiar. She's probably know. the most famous person, like, who you could recognize by right. age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you said, I was like, oh, the breathy voice. It's her. Um, yeah. But her character is so different she, from yeah. the mom in Back to the Future. She got a lot of, she did a lot of sci-fi movies in the 80s. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. You Have you seen Howard the Duck? I can't remember if I asked you that. No. Okay. That's a sci-fi movie? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, nothing. I'll say no more. Okay. So then you also, I don't know anyone else in the movie. Well, okay. Tom Skerritt, I recommend. This is what I'm getting towards. The mm-hmm. the the uh, space shuttle, the astronaut pilot, Andy, Kate Capshaw. Yeah. She didn't look familiar to you at all? Well, I was doing a little bit of reading before we... Oh, <laughs> cheating. Before we started this. Cheating. And I don't remember what I read about her. What she... You already forgot. She him. married Steven Spielberg? Yes. 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 That's right. She's married to Steven Spielberg. Yeah. But she was not married to him in this movie. This is I, like where they met, right? I don't remember where they met. So 
false for me. I don't know. I, okay. I feel ashamed, but I don't know. But I, the, the reason I know her as an actor and as an actress is she was in a super duper famous movie that you have absolutely seen. And it has to do with a fedora, a bullwhip, and an idol. She was at Indiana Jones. Which and one? I don't know. I never even remember the names of them. The Temple of Doom. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It has like the most, one of the most scarring scenes of the 80s for my childhood is in that movie. Temple of Doom. Yeah. What would be so scarring from oh, that one? Oh my goodness. It's the Ark of the Covenant that I, well, yes. Gives me nightmares. That too. But. The uh, Temple of Doom has the famous scene where there's the guy and they're literally like sacrificing people and he goes, Bugaram, Shugaram, and he like shoves his hand into their chest cavity and pulls their heart out. Whoa, I forgot all about oh, that. Oh, I had night. That definitely scarred me as a child. Thank you, Steven Spielberg. Can't wait to show that to the kids. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's where she came from. That's where she, that's where I know her from. So it's really, uh, it was cool for me seeing her in that role again. I'd seen this yes, as a younger person, but yeah, it was cool. I enjoy that. Anyone else from this movie that I should know, recognize? I mean, you already got Tom Skerritt, Kelly Preston, which I don't remember if you recognize who she was or not, but... Oh, hello, there's one more, yeah. Which you noticed when we were watching it. Oh, jeez. I don't remember. Lock and load. Oh, yeah, John Locke from Lost. He Ter probably has a real name. Terry O'Quinn is his Yes, that's name. his real name, yeah. Yeah. You know what his character's name was in this movie? No, what? Launch director. <laughs> <clears throat> he, it's fun to see him acting as a young man. Yeah, he, he had hair and everything, kind of. Yeah, yeah, still that squinty smile. Yep, yep. Ooh, I loved him in Lost. Yeah. Was, and hated him. Yes. In Lost. Yes. So it was good acting, yeah. Yeah. So um, what was your, like, favorite part of the movie? You've mentioned, like, characters you like, but was there a specific, like, scene or scenes that you really enjoyed? Let's see. I mean, everything with Jinx, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, while I'm thinking, what about you? Is there I am you such like? a sucker. I'm ready for it. I'm yeah. such a sucker for NASA scenes where they're like in the the launch HQ and like there's tense things. Yeah. And when yeah. they celebrate and all that, I'm just a sucker. Yes. I'm a sucker when I see it in a movie. When Curiosity landed yes. and the control center went crazy, I was going crazy. Yeah. I just love scenes like that. They're I, so, it's so weird, but I do. I love those. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, that's a really good answer. Thanks. <laughs> I also liked the um, the way they use the space shuttle. Like, there's no special effects. There's very few special effects in this movie for yeah. the anti-gravity stuff. They had to, like, do pantomiming. And they were kind of joking about that, like all of them. You could see it in a few of them. Like they keep their hands moving, like as if you're in water. Yes. You know? Yeah. And sometimes you'll see one of them doing it and the other one's not doing it as much if you really <laughs> pay close attention. But they had the whole thing on, I think it's what it called the gimbal, the yep. set for the space shuttle. So they were like rotating it as they would do their scenes to get different perspectives, which was really cool. And it was like a scale to scale model of the ship. So all the scenes in the ship are just awesome. Yeah, I, I think being in the ship was probably my favorite part. Yeah. Um, especially when they first get in and you don't realize they're, I mean, you know it's coming, but mm -hmm. they're not in danger yet. Yeah. And they're just kind of like crawling in and like climbing up stuff. Because at that point, the seats are kind of like, um, the backs are parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. So they have to kind of climb up. And that to me is just like this fun, you're a kid and you're just kind oh, of yeah. exploring a new space and crawling around it. That would be so mm -hmm. much fun to be a so kid fun. doing that. Um, also, the, the bunk scenes. I was thinking that too, actually. Um, yeah. Where like um, Tish is to get her, oh, the other girl's attention. Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. She kind of just like, she's on the top bunk and she just like drapes down. And yep. hangs underneath. Just I don't know. Like as a as a someone who went to band camp and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. had fun just in those those times of your life. Like that was just fun to see. So I liked all of that. Yeah, those are fun. Um, I just like the the camaraderie that you get in scenes like that too. It's just fun. Yeah. And, and feeling like that it, it captures that moment you feel as a kid when you go away for the first time, like that energy you have of feeling like I'm a human being on my own kind of stuff. Like yeah. Yeah. It caught that really well. I liked it a lot. Uh, my OCD moment of the movie, though. What? And I said it during the movie was when they're like in space, they got to get the oxygen. 
the adult can't fit through the rebar. There's like a grid of bars. Yeah. First, you're like, why did they put the canister there if no human could reach it? <laughs> First question. <laughs> Second question. Yeah, NASA. NASA designers <laughs> of the movie, who obviously NASA did did not give them input on this, but still, anyway. <laughs> The second part is the hero is the 10-year-old who's in an adult NASA suit, which has the same dimensions as the adult, but they can fit through the bars. <laughs> I just had to get that off my chest. You feel better? Not really. It's still driving me crazy, but still. <laughs> now it's going to drive someone else crazy. I hope it does. So I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for indulging my OCD moment of the movie. Yeah. No, no worries. Um, there, there's always a space scene. Mm -hmm. There's always a, like... Someone loses their grip and like goes off into space. Drifts, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. those those are particularly for me. Yeah. So fraught with tension. Yeah. Totally. Um, you know it's coming, but oh my gosh. I was mm -hmm. like, I find myself thinking, okay, this is not a movie where someone's gonna die. They're all gonna make it. Hopefully. Other movies are not like that. No, they're not. No, that's true. But this one, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think this one held up well in general? Um I, I, I think I'm going to make a category of time capsule. Okay. So it doesn't really need to hold up, but it's Ooh. still enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think this falls into. Agree. The score was by John Williams. Sure was. He's so good at space stuff. He's like, so good at all stuff. Don't yes. box him in. But yes, no, I agree. No, but he, he especially, for me, he shines when you're like mm -hmm. looking at space and listening to his music. Like a lightsaber, you might say. <laughs> that was actually one of the funny parts is he did the score for this. And there are a ton of Star Wars references in this movie. And he, of course, famously did the Star Wars scores as well. When they were filming this on the soundstage, they were right next to another soundstage. Mm -hmm. Guess who was um, working on that one? Oh, I don't know. Who? Think of um, a musician of the day. A musician of the Prince. Oh, no, not Prince. I'm sorry. You love him. I love Prince. <laughs> Um, I don't know, Bo Diddley. As big as Huey, Prince. Huey Lewis in the news. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Oh. Guess what he was filming next door? It's, it's from... Oh, was he filming uh, the the space Captain Emo? EO. Yes. EO. EO. He was yes. filming that next That's door. That's wild. I know. That's cool. Well, space was very much in the zeitgeist at that time. Okay, so this movie did not do really well in the theater. We have to talk uh, about that. I was just going to... trans. Yes, I was going to say, like, space was in the zeitgeist and not always for a good reason. Do you want to hear what Roger Ebert said? Oh. I have his review. Sure. He gave it one and a half stars. Oh, Roger. This is for the Chicago Sun Times. R.I.P. Roger, by the way. Yeah. And he panned the dialogue as dumb <laughs> and the direction and editing as, editing as slow footed. Uh -huh. I didn't feel like it was slow. I mean, there were a couple parts where the exposition of like moving the spaceship was a bit slow sometimes, but I think they were using that to ground, to use what effects they had at the day. He also said, would anyone like this movie? Juvenile space nuts, maybe, but they'd be too sophisticated. <laughs> oh, double burn. Well, you're wrong, Robert, because we're middle-aged and we liked it. <laughs> um, and space enthusiasts. Yeah. Space yeah. nuts. Yeah. We are definitely space nuts. Um, <laughs> the reason I was thinking, though, is because this came out in summer of 1986. Mm -hmm. And in January of 1986, the Challenger explosion occurred. Yeah. So like that just pretty much doomed the release to be anything, regardless of what Roger Ebert thought, like just it's just too fresh, you know. That yeah. explains why in my memory of this mm -hmm. movie, I remember seeing a preview for it yeah. somehow. I don't even know. They how showed I saw previews preview. like a year before back in the day. It used to be the preview was it was like Lord of the Rings. You remember how Lord of the Rings would do it literally a year before it came out? <laughs> That's how it was just in general. Like yeah, well, in the I 80s. remember seeing the preview mm -hmm. and then it never coming out like yeah. that's what i remember to me like then it just never materialized and i never got the chance to see it so yeah yeah that's yeah a, that's all of that is a shame well yeah absolutely everything it um yeah it i don't even think it it its budget was like 18 million or something and it made like nine wow. just i'm sure it was i think it was more the disaster versus roger ebert but that you know only yeah probably the watcher knows the watcher yeah and marvel comics that's a nerd reference sorry <laughs> okay so my favorite question before we uh wrap up okay what if any messages do you think this film had? um well space is hard mm -hmm. 
That's one of my favorite sayings. Right space now, is yeah. hard. <laughs> space I feel is like hard. that should have been your tagline for the movie. <laughs> space is hard. I honestly didn't know before <laughs> in the preamble, before I watched it, that yeah. they were going into space. Oh, okay. I really thought that it was just the camp. The camp. Okay. Um, so that was a cool surprise. At some point I saw that was coming. Yeah. But yeah. Um, other messages? What about you? Do you do you see any messages in this film? Oh, like obviously there's the reach for the stars but that's just the general theme i really think like what i said earlier though it's like it human human um achievement only occurs when we work together and build off of the knowledge that we've like worked together with people in the present and we work together with the people of the past you build off of their accomplishments and go i feel like that's the message of this film Cause it shows that like with how I illustrated earlier of like, you have all these people with different strengths and if they try to be a star and they try to be the best, then it just kind of tanks it and the, and the system breaks, you know? So yeah. Teamwork. I see. So there's like also like wisdom, like mm-hmm. the teachers were, you know, mm-hmm. experienced mm-hmm. people with wisdom. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That's yeah. nice. That's cozy. That's kind of the whole That's science a, deal anyway. So yeah. Like a good blanket on a yeah, cozy day. Exactly. Um, space other, blanket, space blanket, thermal blanket. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know. Other messages for me is like, would be like aim. You said already shoot for the stars, but, mm-hmm. um, like keep trying. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's another like one. You don't just shoot for the stars once. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. You just, you keep doing it. Um, keep at it. But also just like don't lose your sense of wonder either. Mm. You know, like Yeah. Um anytime I think about space and like an exploration of space, it's this beautiful, wonderful thing. Um so I think that's important to keep. I feel like that um the scene they filmed where she was a little girl, I think it was when mm-hmm. the astronaut, when she was a little girl, they showed her. Like in a corn in, in a wheat field or in something. In the very beginning. Yeah, in the very beginning. Yeah. That like encapsulates that wonder you're talking about really nicely. Yeah. Oh, um, if you were a space shuttle, any space shuttle, any spaceship ever, what would you be? Um I forgot to ask. Wow. The first thing there's so many that come to mind. Yeah. James Webb. Um Oh, you're curiosity. thinking real ones. I was gonna let you do anything. Oh. Well, I'm thinking of Hubble. Oh, okay. Hubble's amazing. Yeah. Hubble gave us so much mm-hmm. for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's true. Yeah. It's a giver. That'd be Voyager. <laughs> Voyager. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about Voyager. Voyager's the one we launched and it just keeps going. Oh. And it's still, it's outside of our solar system and beyond. Nice. And it's still every once in a while. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's still sending us stuff back and it's got just this little tiny camera. And it just keeps giving us, it gave us pictures of Pluto and. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, NASA and space. Hashtag <laughs> love letter. And this week, the moon, uh, like India landed uh, on the moon. That was so great. Yeah. And seeing the footage of that. Oh, I haven't so seen cool. the footage yet. Oh, it's so cool. We got to wrap this up yeah, because I need to go see the footage. Let's go get to that. So, All right. Yep. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>